And because of these really weird angles, we're unable to get any clamping pressure to hold those glue joints tight while the glue cures. So pretty much no matter how we try to clamp things, the clamps just slip off. However, I was able to find a commercially available solution that was about $25 a pair. And although that definitely would work, I would have to either buy a lot of them or do one joint at a time and it would take absolutely forever to finish that project. So I decided I'll just make it myself. Not only are these clamping blocks super useful for getting solid clamping pressure on angled joints, they're also super good use of those plywood scraps I'm sure we all have laying around. Come on, I can't be the only one who refuses to throw these pieces away, right? Over at our mobile workbench, I started laying out the design. I'm thinking that I'll cut one side with a 45 degree angle because creating a 90 degree miter is pretty common. I also want to have a fairly thick bottom to these clamping blocks, just to make sure they don't snap when they're under load from all the clamps. On the other side of the block though, I marked out a 22 and a half degree angle. I'm thinking this should cover just about any clamping situation I might come across. Now I could tell you that there's some fancy geometry principle that proves that these are the best angles, but to be honest with you, I have no idea. I'm just guessing. So now all you need to do is cut out the shape. You could definitely use a bandsaw, and honestly, I'd probably recommend that you do. But we don't have one, so I just pulled out my jigsaw from the early 1990s that desperately needs a new blade. You could also do this on a table saw by beveling the blade and then just cutting out the middle. And come to think of it, there are actually a ton of choices you could use for this. A router, a dremel, scroll saw, multi-tool, spindle sander, CNC. But the jigsaw just seemed like the easiest thing for me, and it was handy. And while this 30 year old saw finishes cutting out the block design, I'm going to remind you to click that like button down below if you're finding this video helpful. That lets YouTube know that this video should be recommended to other viewers like you and it really helps this tiny channel grow. But if you really want to help us grow even more and you really like this video, consider subscribing to our channel. That's like hitting the supercharge button to help our channel grow. No pressure, just enjoy the rest of the video. With the shape of the block cut out, we could finally put that awful Harbor Freight sandpaper to use. This is easily the worst sandpaper I've ever used, but it'll work perfect for this application. I just cut out some strips that are the exact same size as the clamping block. I then grabbed some of this 3M spray adhesive to attach the sandpaper to the block. And for this stuff to work best, you spray it on the clamping block and on the sandpaper. You let it sit for about 20 seconds or so, and then press the two pieces together until this glue starts to grab. Then just take some scissors or an X-Acto knife and cut off the excess sandpaper. And then you can repeat these steps over and over again until you have as many clamping blocks as you need. Now to show you how these blocks work, it takes a little explaining to get the optimal results. I won't bore you with all the physics, but in order for this joint to come together properly, the clamping pressure needs to be perpendicular to the center of the joint. So I'll mark the center of the joint, and then use a square to mark a line perpendicular to that mark. Oh, and I'll also make a perpendicular line on each clamping face. Bring in the clamping block over to the joint, you can see that the 45 degree face won't direct the pressure across the line that I drew earlier. However, using the 22 and a half degree face gets the pressure pretty close to being exactly on that line. Now you aren't gonna get this perfect every single time, but one of the clamping angles should work better than the other. And once you have the block positioned correctly, just clamp it to your workpiece. One block should go on each side of the joint. Then place one more clamp across each block for the perfect clamping pressure. It's really just that easy. 